In this video, I'm gonna show you how to set up your Apple Watch Series 10 and pair it to your iPhone. So on the Apple Watch Series 10, we need to turn it on. And to do that, you're gonna find the button below the digital crown called the side button. We're gonna press and hold on the side button for a few seconds until the Apple logo appears on the screen. So I'm gonna press and hold. I'm still holding, still holding. There's the Apple logo I can let go. So it's gonna go on its little setup process here on the watch for a moment, but back on our phone, you're gonna to wanna to locate the watch app. So the icon looks like this. If you don't have it on your home screen, you can tap here to search, and then you can type in watch, and then tap on watch to open that app. So here on the uh, watch, it says bring your iPhone near your Apple Watch. It is already nearby, so I'm gonna go ahead and tap start pairing. So it says, if you have an Apple Watch, you can set it up here. If you're setting up for yourself, go ahead and tap set up for myself. If you're setting up for a family member, you'll wanna tap set up for a family member. I'm setting up for myself, so I'm gonna tap set up for myself. So now it's asking for face ID, so I'll go ahead and uh, tilt there. Now it's recognized it. Now it's saying hold the Apple Watch up to the camera and align it with the viewfinder above. So now we have this little screen here on the Apple Watch and I'm going to hold my phone above it until that little screen becomes inside. And there we go. It says your Apple Watch is paired. And now we have this little design here on the Apple Watch. And I have some options I can restore from a backup or set up as a new Apple Watch. If this is your first Apple Watch, you'll probably only have one option and you might not even uh, see the screen or you'll just tap continue. So. If you're gonna restore from backup, you can do that. I'm gonna go ahead and tap set up as a new Apple Watch. So we can say which wrist preference, on which wrist do we wear our Apple Watch. So I'm gonna keep this on left, but you can also choose right if you prefer. I'm gonna go ahead and tap continue. And now we have some terms and conditions. If you want to read more of these, you can tap and scroll and such. There is quite a few of it though, so you can also send to your email if you'd rather read these all later. If you want to disagree, you won't be able to use your Apple Watch. And if you're ready to agree, you can go ahead and tap agree. Okay. So now it's saying Apple Watch passcode when you set a passcode, Apple Watch locks when you take it off, and requires a passcode to unlock. This helps protect your data. So you can create this now if you would like. If you're gonna use Apple Wallet, you're gonna to have to create this anyway as that is required for using Apple Wallet. Um, you can create a passcode, add a long passcode, or not add a passcode. So for now, I guess I'll go through the um, process of creating a passcode just so you can see what it looks like. So we had a little chime here and it looks like the default is create a four digit passcode. So I'll just do something semi easy. I'll say every odd number, one, three, five, seven. And then we'll re-enter it to confirm we hit the right thing. And this is not gonna be my real passcode by the way, but just so you can see, one, three, five, seven. And there we go. So now we have some text and size options we can set up for our preferred reading experience. So you can see here on your phone, if we enable bold text, watch what it does on the watch. So it actually makes the text bold here on the watch. And if I disable that, it'll go back. So you can make your selection of which of those you prefer. You can also change the text size. So if you need much larger text, you can increase the text size, or you can have it even smaller if you would prefer. And if you'd rather have it back at the default, it lets you know that third tick is the default. So you can also uh, change these things later in the Apple Watch app if you want to make changes at some point. So I'm gonna go ahead and tap continue. And it's just letting us know that Apple Watch shares settings with the iPhone for these things. And it's just something you have to say, okay. And then we have personalizing fitness and health. So. Having this information ensures that fitness and health data are as accurate as possible. These details are not shared with Apple, so you can provide your date of birth, your sex, your height, and your current weight. You can also um, enable if you are using a wheelchair so that you can track pushes and add those to your move ring. If you need to enter those, go ahead and enter those there. You see something different, then you can make changes here. I'm gonna go ahead and make a quick change for myself. All right, and then I'll tap continue. All right, so here's saying we can get notifications about our health, 
receive a notification when there's something you need to know. Your noise app can uh, measure sound levels without recording audio and notify you if they might affect your hearing. You can also have a cardio fitness notification if your level is low. You can also have low heart rate notifications at rest and high heart rate notifications at rest. I'm going to choose to leave all these enabled. If you would rather not have one of these enabled, you can always just tap here and that will disable it and then you can tap continue. So go ahead and make your selections there and then tap continue. And uh, for one of the ones I chose, it looks like it's wanting me to say if I'm taking any heart medications because the cardio fitness estimates can be affected by these. So if you're taking calcium channel blockers or beta blockers, you will want to enable those. Otherwise, you can just say, I'm not taking any of these and go ahead and tap continue. And this is just letting you know that your Apple Watch can help an emergency. You can hold the side button to call emergency services and notify emergency contacts. You can get fall detection during workouts. You can also get crash detection if Apple Watch detects a car crash and a backtrack setting for backpackers. So you can also change these features in the watch app at a later time. So I'm going to go ahead and tap continue. And it's going over the new double tap feature. So let's tap your index finger and thumb together twice to answer a call, reply to a message, see your smart stack and more. So you can go ahead and tap continue. And it looks like it has a depth app that can automatically open underwater and measure temperature, time and depth to 20 feet. So if you want to enable that automatically, you can tap here to open depth when submerged. I'm not likely to be needing this feature, so I'm going to say don't open automatically. And if you are going to use this for diving, there's some uh, <laughs> things to be aware of. So otherwise, you can tap continue. All right, so it's signing into my account, and this may take a few minutes. All right, and here we're being asked if we want to add cards to Apple Pay. And I do really enjoy using Apple Pay. I'm not going to set this up at the moment, though, so I'm going to set this up later. But if you'd like to go ahead and do this now, you can tap continue and uh, follow the instructions on your screen. So I'm going to go ahead and tap set up later. And it says, welcome to Apple Watch. And we got a little chime here on the watch. And it looks like I can just tap done. All right, so it says uh, wearables Apple Watch. These are my current faces. And then we have all of these other settings that we can go over in other videos if you would like me to do so. And if we go ahead and double tap here on our watch, we're going to have to enter our passcode to wake it up. So I'm going to say 1357. And it looks like we have a little hello and a start. So I'll go ahead and tap start. And it's going through a little onboarding on how to navigate your Apple Watch. So you can press the digital crown to see your apps. So I guess we're going to press the digital crown here. All right, so there are our apps. We can also press the digital crown to return to our watch face. And then we can press the side button to open the control center. Let me get this out of the way. So there's the control center. And we can press the side button again to close it. Let me zoom in here so you can see this a little better. And we can turn the digital crown to see our widgets. So I guess I'm going to rotate here. There we go. And welcome to Apple Watch. So I guess it left us here on our widgets. I guess this is a new widget view. So now our we can press the digital crown to go back to the watch face here. And now our Apple Watch Series 10 is connected to our phone. If you'd like to learn more about your Apple Watch, consider subscribing to my channel and also letting me know in the comments below if you have any specific questions about how to use your Apple Watch Series 10. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video.